Today I will be taking a look at Deep in OS. They recently had a pretty major release a couple of weeks ago, but I have not seen a lot of coverage online about it. Therefore, I decided to take a look at it myself. Just some background on Deep in itself. It is a Linux distribution that uses its own DE called Deep in Desktop Environment, which is written in Qt. The user base is mostly Chinese and it's also developed by a Chinese company called Deep in Technology. Its development started around 2004 and the company that owns it joined the Linux Foundation in 2015. This year they also released an AI for IDE photo editing and search along with two chat assistants. Starting with this release they also said that they will be providing hardware support for ARM64 and RISC-V processors. Deepin as an OS is open source but it does come bundled with some proprietary programs so do keep that in mind. There has been some controversies as well with regards to privacy. For example, the CNCC statistics application was an analytics program that gathered information when users used the App Store. This code was considered suspicious as it collected a wide variety of data. Eventually, the developers decided to remove CNCC. Okay, with that out of the way, let's boot the system up. I'll stick with English. It seems they want us to agree to an end-user license agreement and privacy policy. For the EULA, they are basically telling us under what conditions we can use their operating system, how they want to respect their IP rights, what you can and can't do. Along with their contact info, if you want to start a correspondence with them. When it comes to the privacy policy, they say that they will store any information you give them when you make a user identification on their site, when you ask for support and why not. Furthermore, in relation to the operating system, when you update the system, information is automatically sent to their servers. Data such as device ID and CPU info. Something that I find irksome is the fact that they will use the information gathered to perform big data analysis. They further go on to say how they will protect your data, but at this point I am not really that much of a fan of this whole thing. To be fair, what they're saying is that they will collect basic information that websites you visit already collect. But this is unique to see from a Linux distribution. Nevertheless, let's proceed with the installation. First we have to start with partitioning the disk. Typically, I would go with full disk installation, but in this case I'll go ahead with custom. I'll set 20 gigs for the root partition and I'll use the rest for my home partition. The installation was very fast, now I suppose we have to reboot. We now have to set up an account on our machine. Let's supply it with the desired information. It even has cute avatars. That's nice. I presume it will set up the account along with the groups and so on. Here we are. This is a fresh install of Deep in Linux. Let's go through this welcome application. I don't really want to see any effects, so I will go with normal mode. At the outset, it's giving us a few options in relation to the theming. It changes both the background, taskbar, as well as the icons. I like the default, so I will switch it back and click on Done. Let's first change the resolution. I need 1920 by 1080. There we go. That's much better. That's the Deepin IT if you want to create one. In the Users tab, we can change our profile avatar, password and validity. We can also set up automatic login. We were just in the display setting. The options are very standard. We have night shift color temperature and scaling. This is the personalization tab that we saw before. They also have a dark mode. I think I'll toggle that on. 
Let's come back to this later. Everything here seems pretty typical of what you'd expect. In the power settings, we have power plans to choose from, brightness controls, wake up settings for the display and so on. Similarly, the setting for mouse are also pretty normal. Let's explore some of the options of the Update Manager. We have several toggles for various features. Something of note here is that they have an option for checking on Langlong package updates. Langlong is a package format that they are working on. Anyway, let's test out an update, see if everything progresses smoothly. The update worked flawlessly, I'll just reboot and start again. Let's look through the pre-installed applications. First thing they have pinned here, I believe is their file manager. It's a pretty attractive file manager, it's part of the deep and desktop environment. Next, let's check out the browser they're shipping with. The browser is made by the Deepin developers and it is based off of Chromium. It's on version 6.5.3. The browser seems very similar to something like Edge. I also believe you can install extensions on it like regular Chromium. The next thing I'd like to do is check out these applications on the desktop. Let's open the Deepin Home application. So this is like a hub where you can interact with various aspects of the deep in home ecosystem. I've never seen something like this before on a Linux distro. If I click on communication, I expect it to take me to their forums. If you want to file any bug reports for any issues in the software, you can submit them here. The manual application, as the name suggests, contains all the help documents for most of their programs. I'll open one of these. Okay, so it's a detailed step-by-step -step guide on how to use the terminal. This is very unique as usually you don't find detailed manuals like these pre-installed. Reasons for this might be the fact that the creators of this distribution market this for use in schools and universities. In that case, something like a help manual would be very useful and it would be convenient to have one in the form of an application. The next thing I want to delve into would be the Software Center. One of the unique things about the Software Center in Deepin is that it has over 40,000 packages. Apart from free software, there is also a huge collection of proprietary apps. In the first page, I can see a lot of Chinese language applications. This makes sense as this OS is mainly targeting Chinese users. There are some English listed apps like FileZilla and IntelliJ. We have games, system management tools, office essentials, and so on. Another app developed by Deepin is the Music Player app. It looks very clean and modern. We have a videos apps as well. The entire LibreOffice suite. Their own text editor. They also have some pre-installed games. Another application that you might want to know is pre-installed is the Cooperation app. This app is a remote viewing desktop sort of application. It can allow things like mouse and keyboard access, clipboard sharing and document syncing. Finally, the terminal. Let's check out the kernel version. It seems deep in ships with the LTS kernel out of the box. I suppose this is a more stable choice. When it comes to feature releases with this version of Deepin, we have a new sort feature for the menu. We can now sort alphabetically or by predefined categories. The menu now also has a full screen mode. This is similar to something like the menu on the GNOME desktop. Another thing they mentioned is that they've been working on making workspaces more convenient. You can use touchpad gestures or the mouse to navigate between workspaces. You probably also noticed that each workspace can have its own wallpaper. This is very different. You don't really see this kind of thing with other desktop environments. 
Another new feature is the update without making backups. In older versions of Deepin, you could not update without a backup. But now they give us an easy toggle to turn it either on or off. The major update that they mention is their new AI system baked into Deepin. It's called US AI. It's available here in the taskbar. It will open up a text prompt similar to something like ChatGPT. You can ask it questions and make basic commands at the moment. They require an account for using the AI. Just make one and select a model to use and you can start making requests to the assistant. I can see use cases where an operating system like this can be used. But I would probably never use an OS like this. I personally don't need most of the features. Also, the assistant is not much of a tool that I would really need. Furthermore, the privacy concerns and the prevalence of proprietary applications are not things that I would like in an OS. Anyway, this has been my detailed review of Deep in 23. Thank you for watching and if you found the video interesting, please do subscribe and leave a like if you can. See you in the next one.